The party can either spend some time cleaning themselves or learning more about each other. The party spends some time thoroughly scrubbing themselves, glad to be free of the muck and grime that comes with grueling travel. While gathering water for the camp, Stila finds some turtle eggs buried on the bank of a nearby waterway. The eggs might be gathered and cooked for food. The Stila decides to gather the eggs, regrettable for the mother turtle, perhaps, but a ne- Many of the travelers here are drenched to the bone. It's hard to say if they've just come from the first crossing or if they've retreated from the second. I say, are you interested in purchasing one of my fine musical instruments? The very reasonably... They fiddle, you say? Certainly. I happen to have a fiddle in excellent condition right here, and for only $100. Are you interested in purchasing it? Of course. I'm a reasonable man, after all. Let's see, how does $80 sound? Ho ho ho, I can see you're smart. Very well, I'll lower the price to just $50. Surely we can agree on that? Even after haggling, the party isn't satisfied. Who should demand a better price from the salesman? You drive a hard bargain, all right. Just for you, I'll lower the price to $40. You won't get a better deal from anyone else, nor a finer instrument, I promise you that. Then we have a deal, yours for only $40. You won't regret this purchase, I promise. It really is a fine instrument, worthy of a leading man, I'd say. The salesman eagerly takes his payment. Despite the wagon not being completely sealed, the party manages to cross the river without their supplies suffering any water damage. A result born purely of luck, perhaps, but sometimes... With Snake River crossing behind them, the party looks ahead with some trepidation. They only hope the trials to come aren't as treacherous. Alice stops by the side of the trail, examining a small plant covered in tiny blue-hued berries. These are Oregon grapes, inedible despite their name, but imbued with potent healing properties. Alice plucks some, in hopes of treating future illness or injury. Matthew winces in pain. His gunshot wound still smarts, but the treatment he received has staved off any infection.
The pleasant scent of frying garlic and onion reaches the party long before the light of the cooking fires. This campsite seems to be it. The party gathers around the campfire. The party spends the night talking amongst themselves, learning more about each other's skills. Good to see you again. It's been a while since we met. I hope you're in the mood for some music. Now, I've written some lyrics for the show tonight, but I think they'd be even better with some inspiration from your travels. Tell me everything that's happened. Lewis Southworth pulls out a scrap of paper and starts taking notes. Rough travels? Huh? Tell me about it. I've had a hard time keeping up with James. The man doesn't let me rest. Well, forget about that. Are you ready to hear some real music? I hope you've got your dancing shoes on. The party takes some time to relax and enjoy the performance. Great show. Huh? It felt good being up on stage again. Like old times back on the farm. Looks like we brought in $150 all told. Not bad at all. So... How about I pay you back for that fiddle? I think you said it cost you $40. It's been great working with you, but I really ought to get going or James is going to have my head. Look me up when you get to Oregon. If I earn enough money, I'm going to buy my freedom and then some land. I'll have my own farm where people aren't allowed to be so particular about fiddle music. Just you wait. Maybe I'll even give fiddle lessons. Lewis Southworth grins another of his wide grins, and bids farewell to the party. The wagon lurches to a halt as the oxen cry out in pain. The bitter sagebrush common to the Snake River Valley has vexed the poor beasts for too long, it seems. Pushing the animals farther through such terrain will surely exact a toll. The injuries should be tended to. Who should tend to the oxen? 
he marked hens to the oxen, there is much bandaging of legs, and some time taken to rest. The treatment has little effect, however, and the oxen struggle to walk onward. The curious shape of Fort Boise looms large as the party approaches. A hulking, walled quadrangle, its brickwork fortifications have long since dried and cracked in the sun. You've arrived at the fort. Who would you like to heal? It appears some resting ends the current day and gives the party a chance to recover stamina. At major settlements and forts, the party can rest the night in the well. The rooms are simple but adequate, a welcome change from sleeping on the trail. With some apprehension, the party surveys the imposing mountains ahead. The final stretch of the long trail to Oregon traverses daunting terrain, to be sure. Alice spots a young sapling on the side of the trail. If cut and properly stripped, it might serve as a strong wagon tongue, but it will take some time. Who should cut the sapling? After a few hours, Alice successfully cuts and strips the sapling. It will serve as a good wagon tongue in a pinch. Howdy again. Have you considered what I told you about needing practice to survive? Try a different challenge to hone your shooting skills and maybe win a few dollars to boot. On your own head be it. See you down the trail if you live that long.
Hunting is ideally suited to those who have spent time in the wilderness, requiring keen shooting skill and the ability to track prey through challenging environments. By following a set of well-hidden tracks, Stila finds a concealed grove with more abundant hunting than she first realized. Stila failed to hunt any- Heavy clouds roll in quickly and soon their rafter dump their rain, blanketing the trail in water. The ground quickly grows wet and muddy under the relentless rain. The party trudges through the sticky mark. It's a wholly demoralizing and dirty experience, and the party begins to feel depressed and dirty. Jesse, refined, is distraught by the mud and dirt covering his clothes. After some time, the rain begins to clear and the ground begins to dry. The party can continue unimpeded. The party takes a moment to choose which trail to follow. A bouquet of wild flowers rests against a lone marker on the side of the trail. A fresh mound of earth beneath it, the surrounding grass barely recovered from a recent trampling. Something has been carved into the stone, words for whoever lies below. Alice decides to approach the marker and read the words aloud. It reads, it's our only child, little Mary, four years old. Alice's voice drops to a whisper as she reads the last words. The wagon lurches to a stop with an almighty crack as the wheel strikes a rock sticking out of the dirt. The sudden movement of the wheel cresting the rock has cracked the wagon's front axle and damaged the wagon bed. The axle can still be used, if done carefully, but the party should consider repairing the damage before things get worse. It is hard work, but Alice repairs some of the damage to the wagon. The party takes a moment to choose which trail to follow. Jesse suddenly yells out, halting the forward march. Hey Reed, in my shirt. I will go no farther until someone fixes this indignity. Someone should probably fix Jesse's, refined, shirt so the party can continue. 
Who should fix the shirt? That was close. It is fortunate we had some spare clothes. I was very close to absolute indignity. A decrepit campsite lies silently in the snow. There are abandoned cooking facilities that look like they are still functioning. The party gathers around the campfire. Though trail cooking requires a specific skill set, talented wayfinders have an advantage due to their knowledge of trail flora and fauna. Any chef will also inevitably bring a bit of their Alice, Hein, tries her best, but ends up producing a meager meal. The party eats it willingly, it's not bad, but there's simply not enough to fill the party entirely. Come dawn, the party gets ready to move on. H ho, there. A stranger dressed in ragged clothes flags down the wagon. A deer carcass lies beside him. It looks as if it has been dead for a considerable amount of time. I got separated from my companions while hunting. We were heading to Blue Mountains. It's so cold. Say, could you spare me some warm clothes? Or anything to keep me warm? I could offer you some of this here deer meat. The party has 13 sets of clothing and zero pelts. Oh, thank goodness so how much do Yale want? The man reveals several small steaks of partially cured meat. What will you trade? The stranger takes the clothes and the remaining meat, and thanks the party profusely before hurrying off towards Blue Mountains. The man is but a step in the distance when the sacks are opened. The meat has been poorly cured indeed, despite the cold weather, it is rotten and teeming with maggots. It really should be discarded. The sacks of rotten meat are left by the roadside, replaced with a deep annoyance at having been conned so thoroughly. The party takes a moment to choose which trail to follow. A happy looking dog stands beside the trail, wagging its tail. If the hound is domesticated, there doesn't appear to be anyone around to whom the dog may belong. What should be done? The dog, as friendly as it looks, could be dangerous. Who should approach the hound? Hila, paranoid, returns to the party, worried that a stray dog may carry deadly diseases or behave in an otherwise untoward manner to her. The dog, for its part, seems rather undisturbed by the mental conflict in Stila's mind. Perhaps someone else could try? The dog wags its tail as Alice approaches, showing no signs of aggression.
The dog continues to wag its tail, happily awaiting Alice's further actions. The dog continues to wag its tail, happily awaiting Alice's fur- The dog's bark, unsurprisingly, offers no insight as to where its owner may be. However, the hound doesn't seem too concerned. Alice isn't quite sure what she expected. The dog continues to wag its tail, happily- The dog barks as the party leaves, seemingly saying goodbye. Howdy again. You gonna give me the satisfaction of accepting my challenge this time? It's all about nerve and wit, or luck, if you believe in it. Suit yourself. I've grown to know you folks and I believe you're good people. There's something I need to get off my chest. I'm not traveling west for gold or land, I'm out for vengeance. My brother Joshua was ended by a lowdown snake of a man named Coogan. Coogan robbed Josh of a fog watch and just took him out, right in front of his wife and kid. A watch, if you can believe it. That coward Coogan took away a father, husband and brother with one bullet. He's got a reckoning A coming. Maybe I'll see you at Fort Nez Perce. You can keep the silver dollar. Greetings, travelers. It's good to see your faces. It's incredible that you managed to rescue most of my friends. Thank you, truly. As much as I wish we could have saved more of them, I must recognize that even this many is a triumph. Please take this reward. It's from all of us. Best of luck on your journey. Oh, hello there, travelers. I've set up my challenge again. Would you like another try? I will grade you in the same way, but it's up to you. My challenge remains the same as last time. I'll give you a few minutes to fish up as much as you can. Once that's done, come back here and I'll grade you on how you did. Harder to catch. Excellent. Just choose who you'll nom- Welcome back. Let me see what you caught and I'll let you know how you did. In the meantime, I'm interested to hear how you thought it went. Confident in ourselves, are we? I like that. Earned confidence as well, as it turns out. With the fish you caught, you got a score of 15,425. That ends up being a grade of Master Angler. Fantastic work. Your fish catching skills are unmatched. I've prepared a little something in the way of a reward for you as well. Hopefully, it'll make up for rushing around chasing fish for me. Matthew manages to catch 120 pounds of fish, and brings it all back to storage. Without a proper knife, he can't proper- Thank you for participating in my challenge. You folks truly are master anglers already. I'm heading in the same direction. If we meet again, I hope you'll consider accepting my challenge again. Maybe try to overcome your own record? Farewell.
Alice notices that one of the oxen is walking a little lamely, and decides to tend to it to ensure no harm will come. The ox kicks Alice in the stomach as its leg is lifted up to be investigated. As Alice loses her lunch, she determines that the leg is perfectly fine and the ox is more than strong enough to keep walking. The Blue Mountains are the final mountain range that the party must traverse before reaching Oregon. Despite the long, arduous journey, the travelers can't help but be awed by the majesty of nature. <laughs>